This is how we, we will take the oath. We'll be up and standing, all of us, the petitioners. Or oh, you don't understand English? <laughs> we'll be up and standing. Um, so you'll be given an oath. Uh, it looks like this. It will have your name. Don't worry if the, there's a problem with the name because we'll correct that. Um, then you repeat the, the, the words in... Sorry for the mishap, but that is our prayer, Chief Justice, this morning, our first stanza of the national anthem. The Honorable Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, the Honorable Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, all our invited guests, and our guests this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. You are not happy? happy. You are? Yes. So this is your day? Honorable Chief Justice, before you are 355 petitioners. They have petitioned you for admission today. All of them are present. You've considered their papers in chambers and you found that they are in order and you've adjourned the hearing of the petitions in open court. Honorable Chief Justice, I'll call out the names of each petitioner. And if you hear name, your name, you say, present my lady, and you be standing, and remain standing, so that the Chief Justice can confirm that you are physically present for the admission. I'll start from the back so that we can see each one's face. Joroge Martin Nganga. You say, present my lady, and you stand. Joroge Martin Nganga. Bishen Nuru Salim. Ok 
Koti Eugene Andai, Irungu Liz Wanjiru, Ndavu Mutuku Joffrey, the Chief Justice can't hear you, Saisi Juliet Wangare, Abraham Abel Ochol, Olwenyi Lydia Nyango, Mwangi Rafael Chege, Lavlin Muthini Nusu, Wanga Joy Mikal, Kenneth Wanjo Hingure, Rashid Shirunyi Musa, Mumbi Lucy Samson, Sentrin Masahwe Were, Mauti Petronila Kemunto, Muika Salma Aronya, Akshay Sundip Monanlal Shah, Alan Kakai Sirungai, Ndindi Kibathi, Kimondo Nicholas Kamau, Golo Emily Sharon Wakesho, Were Joan Akini, Olali Fiona Margaret, Adundo Cindy Laura, Mushai Ruth Mudoni, Ruth Wanjiku Munwa, Viona Mwendwa Mwenda, Halima Saadia Hassan Nur, Joan Jeruto Keston, Wangu Njanja Gatonye, Sabrina Naliali Adika, Mary Muhiri Chacha, Chege David Mwangi, Scovia Lois Osimbo, Kinywa Betty Ntinyari, Nyandieka Christine Kerubo, Mukamani Bob Charles Echesa, Aseka Shadrach Osanya, Kanyingi Helen Wanjiku, Njenga Harrison Nyamu, Njuguna Helen Wangoi, Maina Mary Waithiki, Moses Anton Odhiambo, Ndia Brenda Murugi, Elizabeth Boke, Otieno Ted Michael, Victor Onyangau, Otieno Fideli Zawor, Sigilai Sonia Chepchumba, Jepto Sylvia Kiprop, Sandra Butsiri Muyundo, Okongo Lorian Mona, Neriko Kevin Odeko, Kariuki Damaris Wairimu, Nduku Mumo Osoro, Bonface Ohaya Ombere, Kadima Moffat Cedric, Nyakweba Riziki Kerubo, Esther Jerop Mutai, Gerard Grace Terry Wanja, Faye Acheng Ochola, Manyara Lovina Kwamboka, Baro Fauzia Nura, Ashubwe Mildred Achando, Owino Joyce Akinyi, Pamela Akinyi Omondi, Doris Katagai Hamisi, Gitonga Ndamari Linda, Kemboi Lydia Jebiwot, Nakandi Daphin, Lois Winnie Adhiambo Ooko, Caroline Jerono To, Sibyl Mukandutie Nyaboke, Wambua Masi Mweni, Abdulaziz Husna Mohamed, Mukungu Fatuma Raia, Priscilla Kerubo Orina, Kamau Wini Gadoni, Muhoro Peter Nderitu, Salo Sadia Abdullahi, Otieno Marigold Adhiambo, Abdullahi Abdikadir Sheikh Nuru, Kigumo Glory Mudoni, Ndege Mary Njeri, Joseph Kirunya Mwangi, Siyasa Martin Muendo, Terry Maya Wangui Mushemi, Gladys Wamboi Gishui, Abdul Wahid Mohamed Afei, Juma Sidra Mohamed Salim, Owino Neri Ocheng, 
Omoma Jacinta Masahwe, Punyua Julia Sanare, Mageto Samuel, Owidi Aba Lindon, Adara Cynthia Gadoni, Nyongesa Enoch Namude, Benedict Kirimi Mirichi, Peter Mukera Maina, Mary Nanjala Wafula, Rono S.T. Chekurui, Moses Chege Karomo, Gashui Joan Wamboi, Mwangi Redemptor Nyakio, Gitai Angela Njeri, Beatrice Wanjiku Mungai, Makini Grace Waidira, Kitoto Pauline Nyakwaka, Nyatenga Jafet Ayecha, Jeff Wanjao Wangige, Ivy Masi Nini Maina, Aburi Frederick Onchari, Brenda Msheru, Webuye Sidney Douglas, Paul Tabitha Wanjiru, Kimberly Wanjiku Mureithi, Gatiku Teresia Ndene, Deborah Mawia Mutuku, Ali Fatuma Abdullahi, Paul Maingi Wamugo, Judy Karambu, Judy Karambu, Kigera Nyambura Jacqueline, Kevin Oyego Oyondi, Anne Nyambura Irungu, Deloras Delor Jane Sera, Jane Monica Olo, Gadiru Joseph Muridi, Chepkemboi Purity, Fabian Mwangi Wanjiru, Aisha Taibu, Waruingi Lois Atieno, Abdirashid Farah, K. Adam Sioto, Musau Morgan John Muinde, Louis Washuka Karuri, Neno Caleb Kimtai, Yvonne Apia Mbaja, Mabea Bosire Cornelius, Maureen Wanjiru Wangari, Agnes Akinyi, Ochana Anet Bonuke, Phyllis Mudoni Nganga, Ajuan Elin, Elina Susan, James Musioka Sila, Efi Onono Oyugi, Trishala Parag Devani, Karomba Ruth Wangari, Kathike Mary Musenya, Grace Mutua Samuel, Alex Mwangi Kamau, Keloa Jeruto Kimaru, Mikea Mulaimu, Nduva Lucy Kamene, Lois Wangeshi Masharia, Owiti Nancy Apondi, Pamela Kainyo Ntwika, Mchoki Margaret Wairimu, Yunisa Nyango Owino, Wanyoni Jacob Mnamunyo, Wokabi Papecho Mudoni, Gekope Nick Nyangau, Moranga Daniel Omanga, Perishan Washera Munene, Gumato Robale, Mzuki Filomena Mbula, Chege David Mwangi, Purity Nkatha William, Chepkoet Patricia Rotich, June Wamboi Maina, Emelda Kageha Busami, Saida Abdullahi Ayanje, Jeruyot Evelyn Jebiwot, Chumba Kipchirchir Evans, Mwangi Consolata Njeri, Kiare Elaine Njeri, Sylvia Wanjiru Manyuria, Lelei Cheruto, Peter Njoroge Gatua, Aol Natali Atieno, Kibet Dorin Jepchumba, Dennis Wachaga Mungai, Kanyiri Mbugwa Kariuki, Jeptum Toroitich, Ida Marwa Muita, Pauline Mishere Ngugi, Mwirigi Martin Murithi, Nyaga Franklin Mudomi, Sara Seneo Lenkume, Ashlin Alwanga Kyoge, 
Masharia James Wahome, Werimu Shege Karago, Faith Okwara Masafu, Kipiego Stephanie, Nyogwondo Lynette Mora, Biwot Kennedy Kiprotich, Njuguna Rose Wamboi, Maina Martin Gujiri, Jerotich Faith, Muriungi Joy Wanjiku, Amran Abdikadir Abdurrahman, Maingi Patience Yekonyo, Muchabi Damaris Walker, Mumbu Masindoko, Iguri Priscilla Mudoni, Faith Edlin Imbogo, Karanja Mary Wanjiru, Karuki Perry Zwamboi, Wini Aluoch Ochen, Wekesa Fini Wanjala, Yahya Ridwan Mohamed, Musamali Victor Toroni, Enadin Mumji Sinyo, Masi Wamboi Mungai, Yvonne Mulama, Jacqueline Kadeu Mwololo, Sara Wanjiru Kanini, Faith Murunga Sifuna, Dennis Ocheng Gode, Brian Okotho Gombo, Christopher Magovia, Patricia Mudoni Matu, Maxwell Omariba Tongi, Cynthia Ndambi Wambua, Babu Evelyn Naitore, Stanley Kuria Mukundi, Sam Brian Yegon Kibet, Omariba Luke Posire, Masinde Tony Lukorito, Okoth Annette Acheng, Gitau Martin Waweru, Ibere Karurwa Judith, Wekesa Nabututu Days, Naisankau Lona Sision, Sakwa Shila Musosi, Ojenda Dorin Osir, Alubaka Gideon Habwe, Lemi Kamau Ndirangu, Wasamba Peter Anyanga, Terriot Duncan, Wendo Francis James Shidaho, Mwangi Ann Mudoni, Onchari Leni Kimade, Ogutu Valentine Christine, Ndungu Esther Wamboi, Rose Ndanu Maveke, Gatimu Lilian Jerry, To Joan Chepchirchir, Kimani Peter Koira, Barasa Wekesa Morris, Kihato Susan Wanjiku, Mwanzia Aaron Mzi, Maina William Steve, Situma Nelima Metrin, Ateno Janet Abayo, Karibu Mary Wamboi, Salim Sali Kareji, Lisanza Kelvin Benji, Chelimo Len Koskei, Esther Ateno Patroba, Beverly Cheryl Alubi, Brian Mwasia Mwendwa, Festa Zotieno Nyango, Sharon Amisi Alinyo, Faith Jepkosgei Kipkemoi, Kennedy Okelo Piemo, Betty Beverly Murunga Mayungu, Sale Jacqueline Achea, Steffi Wang, Wangu Wamai, Ruth Mutanu, Linda Nandutu Wanjala, Amos Aruz Triza, Nelly Njeri Njenga, Fiona Wanjiru Kariuki, Lydia Keshani Mise, Virginia Mukonyo Mutuku, Nicole Ndeti Mwidaga, Okech Brian Omondi, Stephen Owino Riema, Agnes Atieno Arum, Sitna Nyakowa Mariam, Sidney Kipruto Koech, Joel Juguna Ngahu, Sylvia Jelagat Chebui, Wilson Julia Sodek, Yasin Nasir Sabuni, Yasmin Abdikadir Woche, Lynette Kwamboka Manyange, Eli George Okoth, Faith Kerubo Ngenyi, Lawrence Munene Kariuki, Kipsigei Billy.
Jacqueline Mukami Wangai, Parei Monica Mendi, Bwayo Laura Namkobe, Brenda Mwikali Musioka, Bira Jesse Otao, Wilfred Kipngetich, Timothy Timayo Kasaine, Peter Wangondu Mudoni, Pesi Wendy Munyaho, Omar Pojo Salim, Okinyi Zipora Bosiburi, Njangwiri Jeff Kinudia, Ngoshi Fred Rikana, Ndegwa Joseph Itume, Moulid Bare Musa, Mohamed Isaac Elmi, Michael Munyiriri Leuri, Masiror Chematia, Marion Esther Omonga, Kililo Jongwa Kirote, Juma Washington Ouko, Job Nyakundi Sauri, Derek Olukaka, Buluma Sharon Mugeni, Ashiundu Joseph Mandela, Osman Abdinur Ali, Elias Mudomi Kaburu, Odiambo Hemon, Geoffrey Kendo Juma, Joseph Marvin Mwambia, Eliena Ndumi Wambua, Atieno Otieno Jack, Patrick Okecho Mondi, Gadoni Susan Wanjiru, Kamwanja Joan Wanjiru, Tana John Peter, Musioka Dennis Mwendwa, Kihuha Gakenia Jacqueline, Mbaya Alan Mariga, Angela Gumato Bonaya, Naomi Njeri Kariuki, Chepto Louis, Nimo Bilo Adan, Martin Mutinu Karimi, Linda Moreso Motani, Ngai Michael Muhia. Mark Waweru Irungu, Faith Akin Mugo, Modekai Lekishori Rereu, Jerono Yatich, Natalie Mokeira Lumumba, Hezbon Odede Ogada, Maunde Isaac Nyangau, Carol Chepkoech, Elvin Omandi Nyandieka, Emmanuel Fwamba Barasa, Alefia Taher Ezi, Farida Kaari Bundi, Muzam Ahmed Mir, Purity Nyagode Gapuo, Agwata Thomas Orina, Louis Gabriel Francesi, Elijah Robert Ajando Mandela. So, Honorable Chief Justice, all the petitioners are here present and you've confirmed their presence. We'll proceed to take the oath. May I request that we be up and standing for the oath? So you hold the Bible or the Quran in your right hand and the oath in your left hand and you repeat after me. Remember you are taking the oath before the Chief Justice. I do swear by the Almighty God that I will at all times uphold the rule of law and administration of justice and that without fear or favor I will well and truly discharge my duties as an advocate of the High Court of Kenya. So help me God. Thank you. You may be seated. You sign the oath. Append your base signature to that oath. Those of you who don't have pens, you can borrow from your neighbor.
Okay, then I request that we be up and standing as I welcome the Chief Justice to make the order that you've been waiting for. This is, this is the order of admission. I, Martha Karambu Kome, Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, being satisfied as to your qualifications, service, and moral fitness, do hereby honor that Erija Madera, Ruiz Gabriel Francisque, Anguata Orina, Purity Gakuo, Musam Mill, Farinda Bundi, Alifaya Ezi, Emmanuel Baraza, Elvin Nyadieki, Karo Chepkoech, Munde Nyangau, Esbon Oganda, Natare Rumumba, Jerono Yatich, Mondekai, Bereu, Faith Mogo, Mark Irongo, Ngae Muya, Rinda Mutian, Martin Karemi, Nimu, Adan. I think this bench and this can sit. Yes. <laughs> Nimo Biro Anden, Chepto Ruiz, Naomi Kariuki, Angela Mbonaya, Baya Mariga, Kihuha Jacqueline Musioka Mwendwa, Tana Pita, Kamwana Wanjiro, Gadoni Wanjiko, Patrick Komondi, Atieno Jack, Erina Wambua, Joseph Mwamba, Geoffrey Juma, Adiambo Amoni, Erias Kaburu, Osman Ali, Ashiondo Madera, Bruma Mugeni, Derek Orukara, Job Shauli, Juma Ouko, Kirero Kirote, Marion Onwonga, Mosiro Chem Chematia, Michael Deuri, Mohamed Eomi, Maureen Musa, Degwa Itume, Goshi Rikana, Jaungiri Kenudia, Okinyi Bosibori, Omar Salim, Pesi Munyako, Peter Mudoni, Timothy Kasaine, Wilfred Kipnetich, Bira Otao, Brenda Musioka, Boaho Namkobe, Pare Mendi, Jacqueline Mukami Wangai, Kepske Billy, Rollins Karioki, Faith Ongene, Eri Okoth, Lynette Manyange, Yasmin Woshe, Yasin Zabuni, Wilson Odek, Sylvia Cheboy, Joel Gaho, Sidney Kohech, Sitna Mariam, Agnes Arum, Stephen Oriema, Okech Omondi, Nicole Muidaga, Virginia Mutuku, India Mise, Fiona Karioki, Neri Jenga, Amoni Trisa, Linda Wanjara, Ruth Motano, Steffi Wamai, Saleh Achia, Betty Mayungu, Kennedy Piemo, Faith Kipkemoi, Sharon Arinyo, Festus Onyango, Brian Mwendwa, Beverin Arubi, Esther Patroba, Cherimo Koske, Risanza Benji, Sarim Karenji, Kabiro Waboi, Atieno Abao, 
Situma, Metrin, Maina, Steve, Mwanza, Anzui, Kehato, Susan, Wanjiku, Barasa, Wekesa, Morris, Kemani, Koira, To, Chipchil, Chipchil, Gatimo, Jerry, Rose, Mabeke, Dongo, Wamboi, Ogutu, Christine, Onchali, Kemaiti, Mwangi, Mudoni, Wendo, Sidaho, Cheriot, Duncan, Wasamba, Anyango, Leme, Dirango, Arubaka, Abwe, Ojienda, Osiu, Sakwa, Musoti, Naisakao, Sision, Wekesa, Daisy, Ibere, Judith, Yetao, Waweru, Okot, Achieng, Masinde, Rokolito, Omariba, Bosire, Sang, Kibet, Stanley, Mukudi, Babu, Naitole, Simbia, Wambua, Maxwell, Omarimba, Tongwe, Patricia, Matu, Christopher, Mwangova, Brian, Ogombo, Dennis, Ogonde, Gonde, Faith, Sifuna, Sara, Kanini, Jacqueline, Mororo, Yvonne, Mulama, Masi, Mungai, Eindin, Sinyo, Musamili, Toroni, Yaya, Mohamed, Wekesa, Wanjara, Winnie, Achien, Karioki, Wamboi, Karanja, Wanjiro, Faith, Imbogo, Inguri, Mudoni, Mombi, Nduku, Mshabi, Woka, Mainge, Siekoyo, Amlan, Abdurrahman, Moriongi, Wanjiku, Cherotich, Faith, Maina, Ngojiri, Jogona, Wamboi, Biwot, Kiprotich, Nyangwendo, Mura, Kebiego, Stephanie, Faith, Masafu, Wairimo, Karago, Masharia, Wahome, Ashrin, Kyoge, Sara, Rekume, Nyaga, Modomi, Mwirigi, Murevi, Porin, Goge, Ainda, Mwita, Cheptum, Toroitich, Kanyere, Karioki, Dennis, Mungai, Kibet, Jepchumba, Alo, Atieno, Pita, Gatua, Leleo, Cheruto, Sylvia, Manyura, Kiari, Jerry, Mwangi, Jerry, Chumba, Evans, Cheriot, Jebiwot, Sandia, Anyare, Emeonda, Vusami, June Maina, Chepkoech, Protich, Purity, William, Chege Mwangi, Zuki, Mbura, Gutamto, Robare, Parisan, Munene, Muranga, Omanga, Gikobe, Nyangau, Wokabi, Mudoni, Wanyonyi, Namunyu, Yunes, Owino, Mushoki, Wairimo, Pamela, Ntwiga, Owiti, Apondi, Royce, Masharia, Duva, Kamene, Mikie, Muraimu, Kioroche, Kimaro, Alex, Kamau, Grace, Mutua, Kavike, Musengia, Karomba, Wangari, Trisila, Divani, Efe, Oyugi, James, Sira, Ajuang, Susan, Firis, Modoni, Ochana, Anit, Agnes, Akinyi, Maureen, Wangari, Mabea, Cornelius, Yvonne, Baja, Nyeno, Kimtai, Royce, Karori, Mosao, Mwinde, K. Yoto, Abdrashind, Fala, Waroinge, Atieno, 
Aisha Tahib, Fabian Wanjiro, Chepkemboi Purity, Gabiro Murevi, Jane Olo, Dirolas Sela, Anne Irongo, Kevin Onyondi, Kigera Jacqueline, Jude Karambu, Paul Wamogo, Ari Abdirahi, Dibora Motuko, Gatiku Dene, Kimbare Wanjiko, Paul Tabida, Webuye Dongras, Brenda Musheru, Aburi Onchari, Ive Maina, Jeff Gige, Nyantega Anyecha, Kitoto Nyakwaka, Makimi Waidera, Beatrice Wanjiko Mungai, Yetahi Jerry, Mwangi Nyakeo, Kashohe Wamboi, Moses Karomo, Rono Chepkurui, Mere Wafura, Peter Maina, Benedict Mereti, Nyongesa Namunde, Gadara Gadoni, Owindi Rindon, Mageto Musomi, Punywa Sanare, Omona Masakwe, Owino Ochieng, Juma Salim, Abduwahind Afi, Grades Yeshohe, Tere Moshemi, Siasa Muendo, Joseph Mwangi, Dege Jerry, Kegumo Mudoni, Abdurai Nur, Otieno Adiambo, Salo Abdurai, Muhoro Berito, Kamau Gadoni, Priska Orina, Mkungu Lala, Abdurasis Mohamed, Wambua Muheni, Sibiu Aboke, Caroline To, Royce Ooko, Nakande Daphin, Kebori Jebiot, Gitonga Rinda, Doris Amisi, Pamela Omondi, Owino Akinyi, Ashubwe, Ashando, Baro, Nura, Manyara Kwamboka, Fe Ochola, Gerand Wanja, Esther Mutai, Nyakweba Kirubo, Kadima Sendrik, Boniface Ombere, Duku Osolo, Kariuki Wairimo, Neriko Oreko, Okongo Mona, Sandra Munyondo, Jepto Kiprop, Sigirai Chepchumba, Otieno Awo, Victor Nyangau, Otieno Michael, Elizabeth Boke, Dia Murungi, Moses Odiambo, Maina Waidiki, Jogona Wangoi, Jenga Nyamu, Kanyingi Wanjiko, Aseka Osanya, Mukamani Esesha, Nyandieka Kerubo, Kenywa Ntinyari, Skovia Osimbo, Chege Mwangi, Mere Chacha, Sabina Andika, Wango Katonye, Joan Keston, Ari Masaindia Nu, Viona Mwenda, Ruth Munywa, Muchai Mudoni, Adundo Laura, Orali Patronira, Setrin Were, Mumbi Samson, Rashid Musha, Kenneth Gure, Wanga Mikao, Lavrin Nusu, Mwangi Chege, Orwenyi Anyango, Abraham Cho, Saisi Wangare, Davu Joffrey, Irongo Wanjiro, Okot Eugene, Bisha Sarim, Joroge Nana. I hereby order that all of you, Saiten, 
be admitted as advocate of this honorable court. Dated this second day of December 2022. Signed by me, Martha Karambu Kome, Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court. The order is duly signed and issued. Sorry, uh, sorry, Chief Justice. Today we are operating Kenyaji. <laughs> I'm told uh, uh, there is a, uh, a team in, in Malindi that is using what we normally use. So I was expecting you to be shouting and celebrating. Did I hear that? Eh? Oh, you are waiting for me to tell you. Can you then shout? <laughs> On the day that I was admitted, I would be dancing here. <laughs> Can you be seated then? <laughs> Some of you may start dancing. <laughs> so um, on days like this, uh, that is the formal uh, process, a uh, program. That is the order that you are waiting for, the most important order in your profession. Uh, we do have uh, our seniors in the profession who give us a uh, pieces of advice and today you are lucky you have uh, quite a number so be ready to take in we will start um, today with uh, a judge a judge not in this hall not in this country a judge from uh, California in the USA she's called Anne Claire Williams she wants to advise you as you start your journey today. I'm hoping that uh, we are able to connect her, if possible. Judge William. Judge Williams, can you hear us? Pray that the voice does not fail us. Judge Williams, if you can Hello. hear us. Okay, proceed. We can hear you. We can hear you clearly. Please proceed. <coughs> the petitioners are eager to hear your advice. You I just to... want to make sure I'm being heard. Yes, you are. Okay. So. Um, Habari Za Asabui, and thank you so much, the Honorable Chief Justice, my sister, 
Dada Yangu. And to all of you new warriors, I say Hungara. My Swahili is not the best, but I certainly wish all of you the best and congratulate you on the achievement you have of being sworn in today as new lawyers. I remember very well how I felt when I was first admitted to the bar. It was something I never would have thought about when I was a little black girl growing up in Detroit, Michigan. If I was there, I would ask you those of you that are the first in your family to be a lawyer, to raise your hand. I would certainly raise my hand because I didn't know a lawyer or a judge when I was growing up. I only saw them on TV. I had heard about Thurgood Marshall and Constance Baker Motley Thurgood Marshall being the first um, justice on the Supreme Court and having been an incredible civil rights lawyer and Judge Constance Baker Motley who worked with him at the Legal Defense Fund. I had heard of them, but there was no one I could feel or touch that I knew as judges or lawyers. So. I know what it means to be the first. And when I think about the message I have for all of you today, I think about the power of one, the power of each one of you to change the face of justice in Kenya, to help change the face of justice in Kenya, to join the chief justice to bring equal justice to all, to further it. And when I think about how the power of one, how each of you can make a difference in justice in Kenya, I think about lessons I learned from my parents. My parents grew up in the South, the American South. And both of them worked their way through college. They went to historically black colleges in the South. When they moved to Detroit before I was born, neither of them could find jobs in their field. My mother had trained to be a teacher but black people were not being hired full time as teachers in the Detroit system. And so she worked at a home for delinquent children. She worked that job for 12 years. And then she was five years as a substitute teacher before black people could get a contract to work in the Detroit public schools. My daddy had a degree in psychology and political science. He couldn't find a job in his field. He tried to sell, sell insurance. He was a terrible salesman, so he didn't sell one insurance policy. And he ended up driving a bus. He drove a bus for 20 years. There were many black men like my dad, the accountants, lawyers, others who had been trained but couldn't find jobs because of racial discrimination in the United States. After 20 years, my father applied for a job to be a supervisor and his white boss told him he was not qualified. Now my father had been a staff sergeant in the army in World War II. He was a very smart, articulate man and he got angry and he decided to go back to school and as fate would have it 
my father decided to go back to Wayne State University in Detroit, and I was in school at Wayne State University in Detroit. He studied to be a teacher, and I was studying to be a teacher. And we were actually in classes together. And I was asked to give a speech about who I admired the most in my life. And I thought about my father. He was not in that class with me. But I thought about my father and tears started rolling down my cheeks because that was when it hit me, bus driver, college degree, college degree, bus driver. Because I love the fact that he was a bus driver. I thought he looked really handsome because at that time bus drivers had to wear a uniform. When I was a little girl, I could get on the bus when we would get toward the end of the line and I could run up and down the aisles on the bus. I love the fact that my father was a bus driver. I went home when it hit me, bus driver, college degree, and I said, Daddy, how could you stand it? How could you stand it that for 20 years you drove that bus and you had a college degree? And he said, I did what I had to do. I did what I had to do because I wanted to make it better for you and your two sisters. I wanted you all to have the opportunities I didn't have. And I wonder how many of you becoming lawyers for the first time today have parents like my parents, parents who sacrificed grandmothers maybe, aunties, uncles, those in your extended family, maybe teachers, others who sacrificed so you could be in that courtroom today taking the oath to be a lawyer. Because to me, but for the grace of God, I can be someone who is cleaning the courtroom, who is serving tea, who is maybe homeless on the street. And of course, serving tea, cleaning the courtroom, that's good, honest, decent work. As my father said to me, being a bus driver was good, honest, decent work. He said no one could take his education away from him. And he knew by investing in me and my sisters, that we could have opportunities he didn't have, and he hoped that we would help change the world, that we would make it better for others. And there were basically five lessons. You know, I talked about the power of one, that each one of you has the power to affect justice, to make the system of justice in Kenya more just, one, case at a time, one person at a time. And basically my parents had five lessons for me which I wanna share with you today. First, to dream big, to have big dreams, like the Chief Justice. She never imagined she would be the Chief Justice of Kenya. But when she got her degree and became a lawyer. She had big dreams about the rights for women, the rights for children, the fact that she knew change needed to come and that she had the skills to help make that change. She dreamed big. And she continues to have big dreams. And you, each of you, have dreamed big. 
because you wouldn't be taking that oath today if you didn't have that dream, that big dream. So continue to dream big dreams because without those dreams, we don't have any, we have nothing. Second, number two, work hard. And I know each of you know that, how important it is to continue to work hard to create and develop relationships with other lawyers in Kenya to help find mentors. I know one of the Chief Justice's big initiatives is to help mentor young lawyers. And so working hard to develop those relationships, to build networks, joining the Bar Association, developing relationships, whether it's at your church or other ways in the community that you can get involved, but you have to work hard because nothing is easy and nothing comes to you easy. And you know that because you worked hard to become a lawyer, continue to work hard. Number three, don't give up. Never give up. I don't care what people say to you, how you might be discouraged. Everything is not going to be easy, but you can't give up. When I have had hard times and I've had hard times in my career, I think about my parents, I think about my daddy driving that bus every day for 20 years. He did not give up. And there are people who have been working in your family and your extended family, believing in you, and they didn't give up because they knew that they could make a difference in your life, in your family's life. And so whatever hardship you face, don't give up, don't give up. So that's number three. So dream big, work hard, don't give up. Number four, stand up. So you are a lawyer. We're taught to stand up for the rights of others. So you have to stand up for yourself because if you don't believe in yourself, you don't stand up for yourself. Who's going who's gonna to believe in you? And you have to stand up for others. When you see an injustice done to others, you have to use your voice. Speak out. Find a way. You know, we as lawyers are taught to argue or taught to um, express ourselves to write, to lay out our views. And we have to stand up for others. All of those who don't have the words, those that are voiceless. And so you can stand up, you might say, well, judge, you know, I have, you know, I have to make money. I have to support my family. I have to do all these things. And I, and I agree with that. But everyone is called to stand up and stand up for justice at different points. So when you see an injustice is done, it could be the way someone is treated at the marketplace. It could be the way you see people treated at your place of worship. It could be in the schools where your children go to school. But we have been trained and we have an obligation to stand up. To stand up and to speak the truth. And number five, give back. Give back because none of you are here today. Certainly, I can say that for myself. I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today without so many people extending their hands to me, helping me. Some people who 
who look like me and others who didn't look like me. Especially when I went to school and when I was in law school, there were very few black lawyers, very few black judges. There were many people who extended their hands to me and I feel that it has been a real blessing for me to be a lawyer and for me to be a judge. I mean, I had no idea that two different presidents would appoint me to be a federal judge. First, to the U.S. District Court, which is like the High Court, and then to the Court of Appeal. Never in my wildest dreams did I think that, that would happen. But there were people that believed in me, who extended their hands, and I feel that when those blessings have been given, that we have an obligation, an obligation, a responsibility to give back. And I know that CJ has plans for you all to give back, to, to give you the opportunity to serve some of those, particularly those commit, those uh, accused of crimes, to take on some of those um, cases for the court, to do pro bono work, to cut your teeth in representing uh, people, uh, being appointed by the court, and giving back. And in giving back, you learn and you help move the system of justice forward. So whether it is in your community or, you know, as a lawyer now, there are going to be lots of people in your family and in your village who come to you asking for your advice. They can't afford to pay you, but they just want to know how to handle things or if you have an idea of how they can handle things. And we have to help. We have to extend that hand. So those five things are really the lessons that have always guided me in my career. Dreaming big, working hard, not giving up. And see that you can make a difference in the world. And I believe in the power of your power. Someone is sabotaging our <laughs> judge. We've lost you. If you can hear us, then uh, we welcome you back. But I'm sure you've heard what she said. How many things? The first one? Dream big. The second one? Work hard. The third one? Never give up. I can see some of you are reading the notes. <laughs> the fourth one? Stand up. Stand up. Okay. The fifth one? Give back. Okay. If we will connect her back, then we will proceed. Um, for the time being, then we can proceed with the words of advice from Dr. Mtai, who is a... Almost everything that I would have wished um, to say in a much more um, eloquent uh, manner. But I just had a few remarks that I had um, prepared. Uh, firstly, on behalf of the school, I want to extend my most sincere congratulations to all of you on this very momentous uh, occasion of admission to the bar. Uh, this date, 2nd of December 2022, will definitely be etched in your memories for the rest of your lives together with 
your birthday, your wedding day for those who are married, maybe the day that your children were born for those who have children. Um, because this is very, um, this marks a very, um, the start, the end of one journey and the start of, uh, of another. I am satisfied that as a school we have done everything possible uh, to prepare you to discharge your duties as advocates of the High Court. Um, now it is up to you as you go out to the world to demonstrate that you learned, that you took in those um, lessons and whether in private or public practice or whatever other role that you choose to play in future, um, the eyes of the world will now be upon you, looking to see how you carry yourselves um, in public and in private. As advocates, you have a responsibility um, to show the highest levels of integrity, professionalism in all that you do. Um, so as a school, we want to see you going out there, blazing new paths, shining to the world. Um, as the judge said, you need to be able to stand up for the disadvantaged and also um, to be ready to um, take positions they, that may not be uh, popular. When you're giving your clients advice, your client may not always like the advice that you give, but you have to have the courage um, to, based on the knowledge, what you have learned, what you will continue to learn, because learning is an experience that never ends, um, to tell them that the action they may be wishing to take may not be the right one, it may not be legally sound, it may not be advisable. Um, we do not want to be in a position where we see advocates filing cases on the most flimsy grounds that will end up being dismissed as frivolous and vexatious, taking up a lot of the court's valuable time um, because either the fee was very attractive or you did not want to um, lose that particular client by telling them that they had no um, case. So we expect you to practice with professionalism and integrity um, and to make sure that uh, you practice um, with courage. Uh, be ready. Um, I think one point that was made by um, the judge about networking, uh, as a school we have already done our best through um, the way that we teach you, the firms that you sit in, uh, you already have built your networks. Those networks will be very valuable to you going forward because you do not know whether your firm members will be on the bench one day, in private practice, in the Attorney General's office. Um, and those are the contacts, the networks that you need to, uh, to build on. Lastly, uh, protect your reputation. As a lawyer, your reputation is all that you have. If you are known for cutting corners, it may serve you well in the short term, but in the long term, people will avoid you. If you are known for always practicing with integrity, having your word as your bond, then in future, that will serve you well. If you ever want to uh, join the bench or maybe uh, serve the public in another position, um, with the public participation that occurs these days and in interviews, um, people will be ready to stand up and vouch for you. Or on the other hand, they'll be able to, um, to put forward statements saying that uh, you are not the person that is right for that uh, particular job. So as I conclude, I call upon you all as you join the bar to be ready to um, support those who will be following you. Um, when you're in practice, if someone comes to you, a student, whether an undergrad or someone taking the ATP to ask for advice, please give that advice. Share with them the lessons that you have learned and that way we shall build a very strong and noble bar. So with those few remarks, um, congratulations once again and all the very best on behalf of the school. Judge Williams, I'm told we found you back. I know it's quite late where you are, so we would allow you to proceed and conclude.
you are listening keenly. So if you can hear us, please proceed. Can you hear us, Judge Williams? Court of Appeals and the extraordinary effort she's making as Chief Justice. You might say, well, she has all that power and that's why she can make a difference. But you know what? She started, she always cared about women and children. And so as a young lawyer, she was, she joined FIDA because she wanted to focus on women's rights and helping people and making a difference. And she saw that injustice as a young lawyer. As a young lawyer, I got involved and helped start the Black Women Lawyers Association of Chicago, helped start a program for lawyers of color and others to help pass the bar. I wasn't wearing a black robe. I didn't have the power of honorable behind my name. But I had an idea and I talked to others and I got them to believe in an idea and then we joined together and we made a change. And that's the power you have as a lawyer because we know how to make arguments. We know how to analyze situations. We know how to solve problems and we know how to help the community. And so I just ask all of you to re remember that as you pursue your careers and to know that so many hands have helped all of us and we're there to help you. And you, we want you to reach out to senior lawyers, to the judges and to others. And I know the Chief Justice is very keen on having a mentorship program so that you can develop all the skills that you need so that some of you sitting in this audience, one of you may one day be the chief justice. You might be the principal judge of the court of appeals. You might be just like me, a little black girl from Detroit who had no idea she would be a lawyer or a judge. And with the many blessings that I've had, been in a position to help those behind me. I have been many firsts in my life, but I've always said I don't want to be the last. And I hope all of you, I wish you the very best in your careers. I know that you can great, do great things. I know you can change the face of justice in Kenya stick to it and remember those five things dream big work hard don't give up stand up and give back and remember the power of one asante sana thank you so much for the honor and privilege uh, chief justice Comey, for me to um, speak with these young lawyers thank you so much Thank you, uh, Judge William. I was looking at the Chief Justice to see whether she will uh, personally thank you. But uh, we really appreciate um, when you dropped out 
uh, we were keenly listening and they were singing the five points. So I, I'm sure they will want to come and visit you, though you didn't tell us the, <laughs> the circuit court where you sit. But we've taken your advice very well and we appreciate that you were able to stay late so that you can uh, advise us today. Thank you so much. I now welcome um, Mr. Tom Kopere, who is a council member at the Law Society of Kenya. He's here on behalf of the president of the society. Karibu. Good morning. May it please your ladyship, the Honorable the Chief Justice of the Republic of Kenya and President of the Supreme Court of our beloved country, the Honorable the Chief Registrar, Commissioner, and all distinguished members present here. When the President of the Law Society called me the day before yesterday that he will be engaged and I'm supposed to make submissions today before this ad the admission ceremony, I didn't know what to do. And then I looked at the Court of Appeal guidelines on submissions, so I prepared a 12-page font, font 12 double space speech to read or to make before this distinguished gathering. And as is always obvious if you are a good lawyer, when you go and you read the mood and you go to the Court of Appeal, and you have prepared the 12 page submissions and then you are told you have only five minutes yes. so you must summarize it in those five minutes a good lawyer must always know how to do that and since a lot of what i wrote has already been captured by the previous speakers and majorly by judge williams i think it has now given me a better opportunity to now make a summary and as lawyers we will also always say you're given five minutes but you request for seven and then you will take ten <laughs> so that is the art of advocacy on behalf of the president of the law society of kenya the council of the law society of kenya and the general membership i wish to congratulate you and welcome you to this distinguished profession of learned friends. It is your singular duty and obligation to live to the oath you have taken today. And you know the wordings of the oath, I will not repeat them. In so doing, you will not only be guided by the constitutional principles, but a number of other statutory provisions which provide the pillars and anchors for the administration of justice. As you enter this noble profession, there is a higher calling than merely the practice of law and urge to make some money. Making money is also good, but there is a higher calling beyond that. You must distinguish yourself beyond that and ensure you uphold professionalism, integrity, etiquette, decorum, discipline, and sobriety both in word and deed and always be vigilant and sensitive to legal issues not only those which affect your clients but those which affect the entire society your ladyship to the entra new entrants you have undergone thorough education and training in law from the university to the school of law and the director at the school has already spoken you have also undertaken the pupillage program with your pupil masters at different law firms or different organizations. I wish to remind you that prior to today, you were getting prepared to join the bar. And during that learning process, 
you always carried an L plate. You must have driven around and you see, uh, when you drive, you see a vehicle in front of you with an L plate, and you know they are learners. And when you hit them, you are the one to blame, whether they are the ones who are on the wrong. So when you are learning, you are carrying that L plate. But today, you are dropping that L plate. Once you sign the role and make your application, you remove the L plate. And if you are learning, then you will start, you drop the L and you will start earning. And that is the tricky part of it. By the time you start earning, you will be subject to very strict prism and lenses of the law, and specifically the Advocates Act. As you become members of the law society, you will also be now subject to our disciplinary processes. So what I would urge you to do is to make sure you don't cut corners. Don't take shortcuts. That you've seen other lawyers driving some big cars and now you want, in two, three months of admission, you want to also drive and compete with them. That will be a dangerous path. Ensure that in the process of earning your fees, you do it justly, honorably, professionally, and diligently. If you don't, you'll soon get yourself on the wrong side of the law. And that will bring dishonor to this profession. I wanted to share with you a story about 30 years ago when I was getting admitted. As I told you, I sit in the council, I represent advocates of 25 years and above in the council of the Law Society. We were gazetted, 50 of us, to be admitted on the 18th of December 1992 by the former Chief Justice Hancock. And we all dressed and came over. And when he looked at the petitions, he asked, who wants to admit all these people? And after doing 25, he had joined the admission process. <laughs> and I was number 27. <laughs> and my family had come. So the proceedings were adjourned, sine die, pending the setting of a fresh date for further admissions. <laughs> so 25 of us, although gazetted and everything was prepared for 18th of December 1992, we were told the next day we were called was 18th of February 2023, and we finished the uh, 1993, and finished the earth. You are lucky that the Chief Justice is admitting all the 355 of you today. Can you say a big congratulations to the Chief Justice? There are huge expectations from your parents, as you have been told by Judge Williams, from your villagers, from your peers, but you have to ensure that you remain discipline. Right now we have about 23,000 advocates admitted to the role. 15,000 are in active practice. So you must make sure that you distinguish yourself among all this by making sure you get very thorough in specific fields of law and distinguish yourself in this crowded field through specialization, hard work. I don't want to repeat what Judge Williams have said, and that will make me speak up, uh, skip about uh, 10 pages. I remain with only one, which I think I must be able to tell you. You now see you are in a global world. 20, 30 years ago, we could not have what we have seen today. You're being addressed by a judge of the High Court and Court of Appeal in the U.S. and sharing this thing so that you know that you are practicing in a global world. The experience is not only in Kenya, but all over the world. And therefore, 
you should be able to make use of this digital space and the facilities which the judiciary has put, including virtual court sessions, with utmost discipline. We have seen people abusing virtual hearings, and please, as you go, get into the profession. You will be appearing virtually, but that virtual platform is a court. Wherever you are, we have seen very, very nasty things happening with advocates in virtual court and doing things which they ought not to do because that is a court and those proceedings are done. Before I conclude, allow me to make just some few remarks in uh, which the president insisted that I had to say. The profession has been bedeviled by several challenges. We have problems of drugs. We have problems of alcoholism. We have problems of mental health, which are brought about by stress, pressure of work, uh, depression, and all these problems coming with practice. You must ensure that you get a work-life balance and continue attending trainings and health sessions. Learn about uh, how to practice well, soft skills trial advocacy, get into alternative dispute resolution together with skills or new emerging areas of practice. And please, the president said, I must stress that you must take advantage of continuous professional development, the CPD program offered by the LSK and the mentorship program, which I'm happy is being offered by the, the Honorable the Chief Justice and even the Law Society. Finally, you are aware that you applied for your uh, for admission digitally we must commend the judiciary for starting the judiciary admission management system jams through which you applied the lsk has been left a little behind but we have now collaborated with the loss uh, with the judiciary and i must thank the chief registrar of the judiciary once you are admitted you are going to sign the role and then you are going to register with our uh, staff which are who are outside there and on behalf of the president i wish to commend the judiciary for taking this initiative and to ensure this seamless process for betterment of this uh, profession you will also we are working to ensure that when you apply for two, your 2023 practicing certificates you will do so also online and we are encouraging that so that we also catch up with what the judiciary has done. Once again, I wish to congratulate you for this achievement and milestone in your legal career and wish you well in all the legal spheres you will be engaged in, remembering that any wrongdoing at as an individual level will tarnish the name of the profession and the image and standing of this noble profession. Desist from the temptations which come with practice at all costs and remain steadfast to your oath which you have taken today. Thank you very much and God bless you. A much of life. Of public prosecution. As you join the profession, uh, time is a very scarce resource. When you go to our courts, you will be told to compress your case within a, a certain period. If you are given 20 minutes, please compress your case within that time. Otherwise, you will not be able to present what you have. Having said that, I want to make brief remarks on behalf of the DPP of the Republic of Kenya, and I want to utilize my time without necessarily wasting judicial time. Well, on behalf of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the ODPP, we wish to say congratulations to all of you who have joined the profession. Indeed, this is a special day. Today you join our noble profession and you should take pride in all the accomplishments that I have brought you here today. We all know what tremendous effort you have made to, to complete law school and the bar exams. We are happy to be part of this ceremony today 
as you join the bar, and it's incumbent upon us to advise you that you will carry great responsibilities as you begin the journey of service to our country. Effective today, your professional duty to our courts, to our colleagues, and the fidelity to the Constitution and our laws and all the laws of the land begins. First, you are asked if you see justice is not being achieved, you are required to do something about it. Because when the public repeatedly sees the justice system fail, then the people's confidence in the law will soon decline. If you identify any shortcomings in our laws, please propose the necessary changes. Your voice, either individually or corporately, matter a lot. You have the skills, you have the requisite training to make positive impact in our society. Making the law work requires common sense and good judgment. As stewards of justice, don't look for simple yes or no answers. Do give options to your clients and advise them on what is right within the sense of justice. In rendering advice, a lawyer may not refer only to the law, but to other considerations which may be moral, economic, social, and ethical factors. Our ultimate role is not only to make the law work for our client, but also to ensure justice has been served. In this highly competitive era, remember that it is essential to be civil and ethical. You are required to act with utmost humility, severity, and observe all the ethics of our profession. Do not forget what our calling is all about. It's not about winning. It's about telling the client. It's not about winning, and it's not about telling the client what the client wants to hear. Please be sincere to your clients. Tell them the truth, even if the truth hurts. We enter this number of profession because we want to help people and solve problems. The justice system is our tool. But we can't expect justice to prevail if we take it for granted. We have a choice and we have a responsibility. We can be stewards of justice and facilitators of access to justice. You are required to inculcate professionalism and the civility at all times. Once again, on behalf of the Director of Public Prosecutions and the ODPP family, congratulations from us. Please remember that as you begin service to our nation, remember service to your humanity is service to God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, and now I want to welcome the Chief Register of the Judiciary to give her remarks and thereafter welcome the Chief Justice. Karim. Uh, the Honorable the Chief Justice and President of the Supreme Court of Kenya, uh, Justice Martha Kome, uh, Commissioner Jackie Ngutia, representing the Judicial Service Commission, Mr. Tom Kopere, representing the President of the Law Society of Kenya, Mr. Obiri, representing, representing the Director of Public Prosecution, our Director from the Kenya School of Law, and all the new lawyers in town, good morning. It's not yet afternoon. 
good morning. Mine is just to welcome you to the judiciary. Uh, it's always a joy for us to host events of this nature. And you all look great. Give yourselves a hand. Um, I want to also just join my colleagues who've spoken before me to congratulate you on this achievement. I'm sure all of you know somebody that you started this journey with and who is not here today for one reason or another. And uh, you're truly blessed to have walked this journey and come to this day when you're able to celebrate your admission to this very noble profession. I also want to just uh, thank the Honorable the Chief Justice, uh, Chief Justice for accepting to, uh, you know, for availing herself to make sure that this event happens today. She could have easily said, I'm too busy, let's move it to January. So Chief Justice, we do not take it for granted that uh, you have made yourself available in spite of your very heavy schedule. Let's give a hand to the Honorable the Chief Justice. We appreciate your constant support. Uh, so I just want to add my voice to what has been spoken before. You have received excellent advice from uh, those who've spoken, uh, especially Judge Ann Williams, with whom I've interacted for the past 16 years, and I continue to learn a lot from her. If you take the advice that has been given by our colleagues this morning and what the Chief Justice is going to, to uh, tell you in a short while, you will it will be well with you. And it doesn't matter where you end up, whether you're going to be in public service, whether you're going to private practice, whether you're going to be in the corporate world, whether you're going to join um, civil society, the principles are the same across the board. And so as you start your new journey in the profession, I truly hope that you'll be able to take the advice that you've been given and follow it. Um, and that, uh, I mean, we, we, we've had situations where we have a lot of lawyers here who have excelled in the profession, but sadly we also have those who um, have fallen by the wayside for failing to follow what you've been told today. I want to believe that we will be on the right side of history. I want to... Um, also just interest you in um, the judiciary. I know that, uh, how many here want to be judges someday? Good. Uh, who is our Chief Justice 2070? <laughs> <laughs> I have three. Well done. You know there is power in the spoken word. Yeah? So if you put up your hand for Chief Justice we will be following. I hope we will still be alive to see you sit right there uh, in the year that I have mentioned. Uh, the judiciary is a very uh, competitive employer. We are the best in public service um, and we have a lot of opportunity for young lawyers. So as you come into the profession, I just want to let you know that we always have openings at the level of uh, magistracy, legal research, law clerks. We have the new, um, the new cadre that, yes, uh, we, we have a new uh, scheme that we have just created and not really implemented for the administrative side. So we have an entry level position called um, assistant registrar, which is a, a training entry point for young lawyers. We also have uh, judges, uh, Justice Kimaru is reminding me that we have alternative dispute resolution so that you don't necessarily have to be an employee of the judiciary, uh, but you can come and support our mediation uh, services and other alternative, uh, alternative justice system uh, initiatives that we have introduced in the judiciary. So our doors are open. The Honorable the Chief Justice is keen on mentorship and we are all availing ourselves in support of our vision to mentor you. So our doors are open and if you want to 
just um, come and see us and have a chat. Our doors are open. Karibuni sana. Um, above all, don't forget to pray. We all, we always have to rely on a, a being that's higher than us, whoever you perceive him to be. So if um, you forget everything else, please remember that and it shall be well with you. With those few remarks, may I just ask um, Honorable Commissioner Jackie Ngutia to come and say something, and then she will welcome the Honorable the Chief Justice to address us. Thank you so much, and may God bless you. The Honorable Chief Justice, Judge Kimaru, Senior Taib, Senior Kopere, the newly admitted advocates, good afternoon. Is it afternoon yet? Not yet? Two minutes to. Okay, I am an advocate and a human rights practitioner. Sorry, I forgot to recognize my boss, Dr. Godana there, a commissioner at the Kenya National Commission on Human Rights. I don't want to infringe on your right to food and association because I know your parents are out there waiting for the photo session and you can go and have a lovely meal. Congratulations once again because I know it's been a long journey. I did this 17 years ago. We were very few of us. We did, we did not have uh, members of the LSK, ODT, ODPP or any other speaker come to speak to us and encourage us on what needs or need not to be done. So I must commend the Honorable Chief Justice and the Judiciary for allowing other speakers to come. Ordinarily, this is a judicial function. And you may be wondering, why is Commissioner Jacqueline Ngutia here? Because I serve you, because you're already now members of the Law Society of Kenya, I serve you as your female representative to the Judicial Service Commission. When I was going around the country during the campaigns, I noticed there was a gap between the young and the seniors in terms of mentorship and just getting to have a rapport between the two. And when I was elected, I had a sitting with the Chief Justice. And I'm glad to note that when we were having a discussion with the Chief Justice, she also told me every other time she's admitting new lawyer she keeps asking to herself she keeps uh, she keeps asking herself where are all these lawyers going to because we all know they are an employment issue we all know that uh, it's not very easy to get opportunities so we discussed and agreed that we needed to come up with a mentorship program and today with the support of judge williams whom i have also worked with for the past 15 years, we said let's give it a try. And that is why I'm here. So Senior Kopere, sorry that I have had to come over in your function. On Monday, majority of you would be going to court. You will have prepared on Sunday only to go to court and get fish stare because you'll have forgotten what you had prepared. That is very normal. You will be ready with 50-page submission only for Judge Kimaru to tell you to reduce it to 12 pages and I'm giving you five minutes. You will also find Senior Kopere very verbose with a big file trying to meet, intimidate you so that you don't submit and take off or go outside the court corridor and start crying. That is very normal. Or you might find the DPP not ready to proceed, yet your boss has told you we need to proceed with the matter. Those are some of the challenges that you will find, but you need to have seniors who have walked through the journey to walk the journey with you, and that is why I'm very, very happy with the mentorship program we, we intend to set with the Chief Justice so that you feel at home. In, in the next, I, I, I'm only serving for five terms, but I'm hoping in 17 years' time, one of you will be a JSC commissioner. Anyone who would want to be a JSC commissioner? Uh -huh, at least two hands. 
and when I'll be enjoying myself in Bali because I want to, in, to enjoy myself, I will be optimistic that I have left an advocate in Kenya who is a judge, a magistrate, or a practicing advocate doing good because of the mentorship program we intend to set with the Chief Justice. So the issues that have been discussed, I do agree with them, work-life balance. Please note that Kupiga Sherehe is not work-life balance. Yes. <laughs> you have to get the proper work-life balance. It is okay to say no. And at times I keep, and this I got from a mentor, don't play God. So you may want to save the world, but it is okay to also say, it is enough, let me take a rest. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Networking, I am glad that uh, Dr. Mutai, who was my lecturer, by the way, at uh, Mo University, the Chief Justice was my chair at FIDA Kenya, and the CRJ was my deputy, and I'm now their bosses. <laughs> <laughs> the irony of life. So, uh, networking, it is okay with the networks you have created at uh, the Kenya School of Law of your, or your universities, but go out attend seminars, the judicially hold seminars, CPDs, and other institutions. Try and go and network beyond your friends. And uh, lastly, as I said, in terms of mentorship, I know we are working towards uh, promoting the pro bono lawyer scheme, which is under the, uh, the umbrella of the Chief Justice. The CRJ has spoken about ADR, but most improper, importantly, as the Judicial Service Commission, we want an effective and efficient judiciary. If a court was set up in Cabernet, I don't think you'll all have to come to Nairobi. If we have a court in Lamu, we'll create opportunities for lawyers to go in Lamu. And as a Judicial Service Commission, what you are aiming us is to promote efficiency and effectively effectiveness of the judiciary and you will all have opportunities. And even if you're an in-house counsel, you will, you will want an effective judiciary because when you give instructions to an external counsel, you want results, especially when you're reporting to the board. Academia, Dr. Louis, you want to, uh, when you're teaching students, you want to give them live examples so we all are dependent on an effective judiciary and whichever tentacle you'd want to go to, I wish you the very best and I'm available to walk the journey with you together with the Law Society of Kenya and the judiciary. Thank you so much and may God bless you. May God bless the judiciary. Thank you. I now invite uh, our chief guest, the Honorable Chief Justice, to come and give her remarks. Welcome. Kindly stand. Thank you. Thank, you. Uh, thank you very much. May we please be seated. Uh, let me start, if I may, by recognizing in a very, very special way all the learned friends who have been admitted to the role of advocates this morning because you are our special guests. I recognize and thank my sister, Lady Justice Anne Claire Williams uh, of the United States District Court for the Northern District of Illinois uh, for gracing this occasion this morning. I recognize our Chief Registrar of the Judiciary, uh, Mr. Kopere, representing the President of the Law Society of Kenya. Uh, Dr. Mutai uh, for the Kenya School of Law and you have done a wonderful job here training these advocates. They absolutely look great. You have taught them even how to dress and how to groom themselves. Congratulations. You look great. You make me proud and I want to say this is the way you should look when you are appearing in court. 
take it as serious business when you are appearing in courts. Don't embarrass me, don't embarrass the judges. When you are stepping out to go to court, find out how they dress. And that is exactly how they dress. Remember this day, because some of them come and they say, it's my first time in court, I don't know how to, uh, how to robe. This is how you robe, we will not excuse you. So I will also recognize the representative of the DPP. Thank you, Mr. Obiri, uh, for coming this morning. I recognize all your parents who have, and guardians who have worked with you. In particular, the Honorable Mr. Justice Kimaru, Judge of Appeal, uh, who is a parent of one of you this morning. Uh, also, Justice Gasheru, I recognize you. I don't know whether you have a child. You have been appearing here nearly all the time, so I wonder how many children you have. <laughs> but we thank you for inspiring so many, including a nephew who is being admitted. I also see our Chief Magistrate from Mombasa, Martha Mutuko. Congratulations, I think she has a child. And um, our Senior Counsel, Mr. Tahib, my friend and compatriot of many years when we were working in the Law Society. Welcome and congratulations. Uh, we also have um, Ambassador Mohamed Afi of uh, UNACL. Thank you for joining us and for giving us a member of the Law Society. Uh, also, we have Susanna Yasmin Price. Uh, we recognize you and uh, thank you for also giving us a member who is being admitted today. So all of you today, uh, very distinguished learned friends, allow me to welcome you to the bar as advocates of the High Court of Kenya. I warmly congratulate each one of you on your admission to the bar because you deserved this reward that you have worked for for many years. Every time I stand before this podium to carry out this task, and Mr. Copelli, I have admitted 600 members at once. The last admission we were 600, 700 actually. Today we are over 350. This can only happen because it is a woman who is a chief justice. <laughs> because it's a woman who knows the pain of giving birth, of bringing up, and of waiting, and of seeing the child qualify to be a lawyer and to understand that the child cannot be kept away from their dream one day, not even an hour. So I am most privileged and honored to stand here today and admit you and perform this wonderful, wonderful law that I take very, very seriously. As I said, every time I stand here, it's an emotional moment for me because it takes me about 36 years ago when I sat where you sat. Having come from the rural village, those who have followed my story, having been brought up by peasant uh, parents, having navigated that journey, gotten married early, and I sat where you were, pregnant, and holding another child by the hand, but I was only harmed with hope and faith that this country is a great country that gives us an opportunity. All of us, notwithstanding where we are coming from, notwithstanding our gender, notwithstanding our status in the society, we all have an opportunity, and I dare declare this even today that our country is great, 
is a country of equal opportunity. So today, you have joined the legal profession, which is steeped with traditions going back to many centuries. Even as these values endure, and we are expecting to live by them and uphold them, for me, I have no doubt in my mind that you are joining the legal profession at a very, very exciting time. It is an exciting period, given that our country is undergoing fundamental changes brought about by our Constitution 2010. We are also actively working towards modernizing our economy and deepening our partnerships and integration with other countries and economies as a result of the globalization. And for that, I want to adopt all the speeches that have been given this morning to encourage you. From Lady Justice Anne Williams, who has sacrificed a lot to work with us in Kenya, to see how we can enhance access to justice and ensure that Kenya is a country that is governed by the rule of law. Kenya is a country that has strong institutions, independent judiciary, independent bar, and a country where all of us can be able to thrive. I specifically invited her because as you have heard, this is a court proceeding. I was supposed to appear just myself with the registrars. We admit you, we just get the president of the Law Society to say something and that's the end of the day. But this is about our new Constitution 2010 that is about people-centeredness. It's about us building relationships with everybody. It's about us connecting with everybody so that we in the judiciary, I as the Chief Justice, I must connect with you because I am admitting you I have a responsibility to make sure that I encourage you, I hold your hand, I speak to you in such a way that you will be encouraged and you'll be inspired to know that you made the right decision to join the legal profession and your hard work will not be lost because you'll be discouraged by many, many things. Some of them have been said. Thank you very much. You have spoken to all the things that distract young minds and young lawyers. So we in the judiciary are looking forward to working with you. And this is the beginning of the mentorship. Today is the beginning of the mentorship. Therefore, I take this opportunity to assure you that the profession you have joined, you have done it after carefully thinking about it and going through what you have gone through. You have made the right decision and this is the right time for you to join. Nobody should tell you you are late. This is the right time for you and to keep dreaming like we have been told. I am confident that with hard work that you have been told about, you will not only earn your livelihood, but also excel as professionals, reaching the greatest heights possible. It has been said amongst you, seats the next Chief Justice, we have judges, attorney generals, cabinet secretaries, commissioners for constitutional commissions, senior counsel, professors of law, amongst you. I'm very, very proud of you because when I look at you, I just see a bright future. And nobody should discourage you that the profession is saturated. 
we've been told we are 23,000. Today with you, I think we become 25,000. Uh, is it 20,500? I think 20,000. 23,500. For me, this is a drop in the bucket because we serve a population of 50 million. Am I right? We serve an economy of 13 trillion. Am I right? So nobody should ever tell me having 23,500 lawyers is saturating a country of that magnitude. There is a space for each one of you, and there is something for each one of you to do. Can you say amen to that? Amen. I have spoken about the existence of opportunities to be exploited. Speaking of the justice sector, we are in the process, and indeed, we are working very, very hard towards a people-centered justice system where we focus on deepening access to justice. We are implementing the vision of the judiciary called social transformation through access to justice, which is focusing on addressing the justice needs of our Kenyan people. And Justice William went through the catalog of the needs that we have in our society. And in our meetings today, we are privileged to have Dr. Francisque, uh, who has taught many of you lawyers at the Strathmore University. He is today the, the Deputy Secretary General at the Commonwealth Secretariat. We are very, very proud of you, uh, Dr. Francisque, because we are also extending this conversation of mentorship with the Commonwealth Secretariat. Uh, to start something called the Raw Food Bear, is it called Barefoot Law uh, Legal Aid something? It's not, doesn't mean that you walk barefoot. It means that we reach everybody, including the one who is walking. So there is so much that we can do together because we did a survey that found out that the justice sector, the formal justice sector, is only able to address 10% of our justice needs or the needs of the Kenyan people. It means that 90% of the justice needs of our Kenyan people is unmet, and therefore you have a law to pray in addressing these needs. The challenge I want to draw to all of you today is to think about the role you can play to quench the thirst of 90% of Kenyans whose desire for justice is unmet at the moment. I believe therein lies an exploited opportunity and entry point that you can exploit and drive in this profession. I can now call you learned friends. And our adversarial system of litigation, our courts rely on you as advocates to present and argue your client's cases. And Mr. Kopere has told you how you do that. You prepare. Whatever, and this I can tell you because I was in private practice for 15 years before I joined the bench as a high court judge you have no choice but to prepare. Talk to your clients, take instructions, do research, and whatever has been put in your hands, take it seriously. Once you do it seriously, somehow God has a way of multiplying that because you get another client, you get another client. And this is why we are very keen on ensuring that we start this training on trial advocacy so that you can sharpen your skills as trial advocates. You can also sharpen your skills as mediators because as you know, we have opened the doorways to justice. 
there is the court and next mediation. There is the NJS, alternative justice system, that requires guidance from lawyers. Therefore, it is essential that you prepare yourself, you do your work properly, so that you can hand trust also by the judges and judicial officers whom you appear before. They want to see people who, have, who are confident and also people who work with integrity so that they can trust you. When you appear, you are an officer of the court. You are not appearing to mislead the court. You are appearing so that you can develop the law. Never mind if your client wins or loses. It is the law that has been interpreted. So you are expected to live up to the trust and confidence deposed in you by the bench. This is vital to the proper functioning of our justice system. Indeed, this is why admission to the profession requires a person to be of good character. I was very sad because this morning I couldn't admit two of you because they started practicing before they were admitted. I do know that is a misconduct. Therefore, I had to deny their petition and ask them to go and clear their names. So colleagues, what I beg of you is to live narrow and straight so that you are never taken to the disciplinary committee. I would like to speak now as a mother and say all of you that I've seen being admitted today, I want to say, I do not want to see any one of you being taken before the disciplinary committee. You hear Judge saying, do you say amen to that? Amen. Because integrity is one of the rarest commodities that we are going to be looking for. And as the Chief Registrar has told you, judiciary is a good employer. But we employ magistrates and all those uh, positions she has cited after you have gained three years ex of experience. So we were asking ourselves uh, with uh, Madame Ingutia here and uh, the president of the Law Society, where are people going to garner three years experience? And this is why this mentorship begins today. Because what is available for you today is appearing in court, isn't it? Since you have your practicing certificate. It's practicing in court, representing those from bono, legal, and persons who require support. It is appearing before those mediators, appearing before the small claims courts that we have opened all over. And it did if 350 of you decided to appear in those courts. We have 129 courts, I think. It just means two lawyers in each of the courts. So you are not many. There is something for you to do and for you to sustain yourselves so long as you abide by the rules the standards of professional conduct and practice, because failure to do that, then you will be struck off the role of advocates. And it will be a very sad moment if any of the advocates, because I have already admitted so many, I think there are 2,500 since I became Chief Justice, there are more than the lawyers who are admitted in many, many decades until uh, 1987 when I was admitted because I was number 1,700. So you understand I have admitted more advocates in one year and a half, more than they were admitted for almost um, eight, eight years, eight years of the profession. So we take this occasion very, very seriously because we know the responsibility that is in our hands is really to support you and encourage you and inspire you to work hard 
and excel in the profession and realize your full potential. So we will avoid the pitfalls that will bring us into conflict with the rules of procedure and the set uh, code of conduct uh, so that we maintain the legal profession where it is. Speaking to you as someone who has been in the profession longer, and my colleagues have spoken about it, I know the temptations along the way. But a man and a woman's worth and value is known when temptations come their way. Therefore, always remember that the commitment that you have made on your admission today is not simply to abide by the set rules. It is a commitment to honesty and integrity in the practice of the profession of law. It is due to this that all advocates are expected to have a strong moral and ethical sense. An ethical advocate is not just one who has awareness of the code of conduct and what may constitute a breach of the conduct, but one who believes in doing the right thing in all the circumstances and in all the situations. I therefore urge you to strive to be ethical advocates on all occasions. It's a rare commodity in our society, but we have to hone it and practice it all the time. To conclude, always remember that it is a privilege to be an advocate. The society puts a lot of trust in advocates as members of the bar. We in the judiciary also take it very, very seriously. The work of an advocate is a kind of public service in that it supports our democracy. Your work is also to ensure protection of the human rights. Judge Williams was able to tell you, even in the communities where we live, in the religious places where we go, in the churches or mosques, you will find there is a need for you to intervene because of your special skill to ensure that we protect human rights, that we keep our economy running smoothly by promoting resolution of disputes. In those sites, you will see people whom you can help even resolve disputes. Like you are told, your special training enables you to resolve uh, disputes and to offer advice. Of course, there are many bad jokes out there, like I said, which you have probably heard, including those who will tell you and dismiss you and the work you do and say, these advocates, all they know, ni kuongea kisungu mingi. You must always be proud of who you are. You have earned it. Don't be distracted by such negative comments. I assure you that being an advocate is a very, very noble calling. And part of that nobility is found also in giving back. That I can attest. This one, I give testimony that once you give back to the society, you get rewarded. You have heard the way I started my journey as an advocate, representing women and children. These were women who were thrown out of their matrimonial homes with the children. And therefore, where I worked, my senior partners, or because I was a junior associate, found that doing that work was wasting their time they dealt with clients who brought commercial matters. So all those matters were given to me. And these are the matters that opened all the doors that have brought me to where I am. So never droop down on any work that enhances the human life of another, that protects the human rights of another. So giving back to your communities and to the wider society is a noble thing for you to do.
I know that all of you here are capable of giving back. There is a lot of unattended work, unattended to work with. We need to give legal services to the vulnerable in our society. I therefore call upon you to take up the legal courses for children, especially those who find themselves in contact or in conflict with the law. We need to look out for persons living with disabilities. We need to look out for victims of sexual and gender-based violence. We need to look out for indigent persons amongst ourselves, because this is indeed what our constitution commands us to do, to look out for the vulnerable. It is taking up such courses that makes the legal profession a novel calling. That doesn't mean it's glamorous, but it is work you can be proud of, like I am proud of all the work that I did at the FIDA, at the, Kenya, uh, 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 at the Law Society of Kenya, and all other organizations that I worked for on a voluntary basis. And it is our responsibility to the society and as a profession to uplift our people and ensure that justice is done to everybody. I hope that you will continue to develop yourselves professionally and rise to the challenges and opportunities that will present themselves during your career journeys. The judiciary and the legal profession and our society in totality has very high expectations of you. And I'm confident that you will rise to the challenges ahead. I congratulate you once more and wish you great success in your professional journey. I pray that God will shine this light upon you every day of your life. And indeed, you will meet success and you will prosper. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> now, please be seated because during these ceremonies, we are very, very proud of all of you. I'm very, very proud of each one of you. When I was reading out your names, I was feeling like I'm actually calling my own child to the bar. And therefore, there are certain people we are also very proud of because we understand how difficult it was uh, for them to reach where you are. So today we recognize members of the judiciary family who have worked extremely hard to earn this qualification. Uh, so on a day like this, we recognize our immediate family comprising of colleagues in the judiciary, uh, many staff members who joined the judiciary before acquiring the legal qualifications. But they have been able to combine and multitask and went to school. Many of you went to school doing nothing else. You went to the university, you went to Kenya School of Law. But our staff here, they were combining their work, their families, and they still went to school, and they were able to qualify. And today they are seated here, and their names have been now written in the register of advocates. We also recognize our extended family, comprising of our children, even our spouses who have been encouraged. There are spouses who encourage the other. Uh, wife encourages the husband to go back to school and stand the law. I wish I could have convinced mine to do that. <laughs> so today we are extremely proud of the following from the judiciary. Ruth Motanu, uh, she's number 86, I think. We want to recognize you. <laughs> she is the daughter of Anne Ragumata Motuko, Motuko, Chief Magistrate Mombasa. Thank you for bringing us uh, Motano. Aida Marwa Mwita. Uh, Aida is working with us 
uh, with NCJ Standing Committee on the Administration of Justice for Children, working very hard to see that um, the children who come in the justice sector are protected and their rights are promoted. Cheptum Proitich. She is a staff in my office and she is one to watch because she is likely to be here in those years that Wani called out. Thank you, Cheptum. Kibet Doreen Chepchumba. She is a court assistant stationed at the Judiciary Committee on Elections. Keroha Cheruto Kemaru. Please stand up, we recognize you. She is the daughter of the Honorable Mr. Justice Ruka Kemaru and his lovely wife, Mrs. Kemaru. They are here to encourage you. And when I talk of mentorship, you know uh, Justice Kemaru is very, very passionate about mentorship of the young people, and he did. I don't make roadside declarations, whatever I say myself. I speak what is in the Constitution and what is in the vision of the judiciary. Mentorship is cuts across what we do, and it's been reading and spearheading our mentorship of the young people. Uh, we have had sessions here where we call people even from secondary schools, and he is going to be the one leading this program of young lawyers mentorship. Uh, with my office and the Law Society. Thank you, Judge. Uh, we also have Mohoro, Peter Nderitu. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, he is related to, he's a nephew uh, to Honorable Ruse, this is Justice Ruse Gashero, ELC uh, Muranga. Thank you, Judge, for inspiring a young man and uh, he has followed your footsteps. I hope he becomes also a judge. And Neriko Kevin Oleko, uh, we also recognize you. You are a son of Mirim Bwari, uh, who is our staff at the Mirimani Criminal Court. I also wish to recognize um, Abdu Mohammed, Abdu Wind Mohammed, um, Afe. You are a son of our partner, Ambassador Mohammed Afi of UNHCR. Thank you, Your Excellency, for inspiring a young man to join the profession. Uh, Susan uh, Abdul Kadil, uh, Abdul Kadil, number two, th 273. Thank you so much. I also recognize you because you are a son of. Uh, uh, Susanna Yasmin Price of UNACL, one of our partners uh, in the judiciary. Last but not least, I wish to recognize in a very, very special way, Professor Ruiz Francisco. He has taught many of you. I think you need to give him a better clap. For the humanity to come and be admitted uh, with, you know, a student. He is the former dean of the Strathmore Law School and now the assistant secretary general of the Commonwealth Secretary. And we are going to partner with him in this mentorship program. Thank you very much, <laughs> Professor. And uh, we look forward to working with you. I also wish to recognize Anissa Taib. Uh, I, Yes, thank you very much. She is the daughter of uh, Senior Counsel, uh, Mr. Taib. Uh, I feel like you are my daughter because we worked with your father in those very difficult days. I think before you were born, uh, when he was a very young man uh, in this uh, struggle uh, for the Constitution, and all these things we are enjoying today. We recognize you and wish you well. I really wish all of you well. I know there will be very many parties today. I wish I could join all of you at those wonderful moments with your family. 
but because you are so many and I cannot be in all the houses, please deliver my best wishes to your families, to your parents, to your guardians, those who have supported you, and tell them we are together in the spirit. God bless you. Thank you very much and have a wonderful, wonderful day of celebration. Thank you, Chief Justice. We have the national anthem as we close. Chief Justice and uh, I guess go to the stairs for the photo session. <laughs> <laughs>